Hello everyone, welcome to stratia.com and then in our second section of our lecture topic urinary tract infection, we will talk about the clinical presentations. In this clinical presentations, uh, we will talk about the asymptomatic bacteria urea, urethritis and urethral syndrome, cystitis, sterile pyuria and pyelitis. So asymptomatic bacteria urea, usually patient is labeled as asymptomatic bacteria urea when the bacterial count is uh, over 105 uh, per ml of the urine of the same species. Uh, even when the symptoms are not present, even patient does not have symptoms of urinary tract infection, but on urinalysis, if the count of the bacteria is above 105 per ml of the urine, it is labeled as bacteria urea. Count less than 105 per ml indicate contamination of the urine from urethra or external genitalia. And then women usually with asymptomatic bacteria urea usually develop symptoms of urinary tract infection at a later date if left untreated. So on urinalysis, if the bacteria count is above 105 per ml and patient does not have any symptoms of urinary tract infection, they are labeled as asymptomatic bacteria urea. But later, if the condition is not treated, they develop symptoms of the urinary tract infection. Then uh, comparison of three populations with the prevalence of urinary tract infection and how they are managed. So if the woman is pregnant, usually pregnancy in associated with urinary tract infection is, uh, is, is treated because uh, in pregnancy, it's, uh, we cannot leave the patient untreated with the infection. So uh, prevalence of uh, urinary tract infection in pregnancy is about 10 percent and usually the treatment for patient is uh, amoxicillin and cephalexin and also uh, nitrofurantoin in the second trimester avoid within 30 days of delivery so depending on the time in which the patient uh, gets urinary tract infection treatment is according to the time period. So in the second trimester, nitrofurantine is used, but it should be avoided within 30 days of the delivery because it can cause uh, damage of the uh, baby. Then in the first and second trimester, also uh, other uh, receptron or trimethoxazole, sulfamethoxacine is also used in the first and second trimester. So amoxicillin, cephalexin, nitrofurantoin, and uh, sulfamethoxazole, all these antibiotics can be used during pregnancy in first and second trimester. And the prevalence is just 10%. It's not very high during the pregnancy. And then second population group is nursing home residents, uh, Population who is in the nursing home, usually the uh, prevalence of urinary tract infection is very high, is about 40 to 50 percent. And usually the treatment is not recommended unless patient is going through uh, invasive urological procedure. Then indwelling patients who have catheters for more than one month, the prevalence of urinary tract infection is 100%. So catheter leads to UTI, 100%. And usually the uh, treatment is not recommended. Usually when, once the catheter is removed, the recovery is usually very fast. Then the lower urinary tract infection in this diagram is just the diagram of the urinary tract hole. They divide, give you the idea of the uh, lower urinary and upper urinary tract. So here, this is the um, urethra, urethra, and then the bladder, ureters, 
kidneys on top of the kidneys we have the adrenal gland this is the diaphragm diaphragm is the major muscle of respiration that separates uh, abdomen from the chest it's uh, it's present between chest and abdomen then we have up this is upper urinary tract kidneys and part of ureters and then the lower urinary tract in which we have the bladder and urethra. Then urethritis is the inflammation of urethra. Here this is uh, urethra. Infection of the urethra is urethritis and then they showed you the different bacteria that leads to the infection and also white blood cell count. Uh, in U UTI, as in any other infection, white blood cell count is high. And when urinalysis is done with the uh, dipstick method, uh, usually that gives the elevated white blood cell count also. White blood cells are the cells that protects against the infections, different microorganisms. So when there is infection, the white blood cell count increases to fight the, against that infection. Now again, some symptoms of urethritis is uh, first is dysuria. Dysuria is the painful urination, pain during urination. Then also frequency and urgency of mixturation. They feel uh, uh, there is frequency, frequently they want to urinate and there is also urgency of urination. Then also there is pain is uh, during the act of micturation, painful micturation is also very common during urethritis. Then uh, pus, pus is also present and then sometimes it is squeezed out of the urethra also. And then there is uh, again tenderness on palpation. When we press on the lower abdomen, patient have tenderness. So palpation, palpation is this, using the four fingers, when you palpate on the lower abdomen, there is tenderness. So these are all the symptoms of the urethritis. Dysuria, which is painful or difficulty in urination. If we divide into word parts, it's dis is difficult. Urea is for urine, so difficulty in urination. Then we have frequency and urgency. Then there is pain during uh, act of micturation. Sometimes pus is also squeezed out of the urethra. Then again, urethral syndrome, worse urethral syndrome. Urethral syndrome is non-specific form of urethritis due to urethral hypersensitivity. So chronic non-specific form. Chronic is a condition, long acting condition due to if the urethra is hypersensitive, that leads to syndrome, urethral syndrome. Some symptoms of the urethral syndrome is again like urethritis. We have dysuria, which is difficulty in urination. Then again, frequency of urination, nocturia. Nocturia is uh, increased urination at night. Then there is also urgency of micturation. There's urgent need to past the urine. There is increased frequency is increased of increase in the number of times patient wants to micturate or pass the urine. This is the area as it shows there is uh, uh, not that redness but its tenderness is there and patient has feeling of discomfort and pain in the lower abdomen. So urethral syndrome is a chronic condition caused by the hypersensitivity of the urethra. 
So some uh, common uh, tests done to find out the urethral syndrome or to diagnose urethral syndrome is urethroscopy, which is the examination of the urethra. And then once the urethroscope is inserted into the urethra to examine, usually the mucosa of the urethra is very red and inflamed because of the inflammation and it's also chronic inflammation. So the urethral mucosa is red and inflamed. Then there is also spasm of the bladder neck. Because of the redness and chronic uh, inflammation, there is usually the damage to the mu mucosa of the urethra. And then after the uh, urethra, there is bladder. So the neck of the bladder is also narrowed or there is spasm of the bladder neck. Then cystitis. Cystitis is the inflammation of the urinary bladder. Cyst is for bladder. Itis is inflammation. So what happened usually the cystitis is uh, from the bacteria that enters the bladder uh, from the rectum, usually from rectum and the urethra. So bacteria which are commonly E. coli coming from rectum found in bladder and urethra. So contamination usually from the rectum uh, leads to a, a ascend of bacteria into the urethra and urinary bladder. So after the emptying of the bladder, usually the bacteria flushes out. Here, uh, bacteria flushes out from the bladder, but they stay in the uh, rectum and bowel bacteria. So uh, sometimes the infection of the bladder is caused by the bacteria which enters from, uh, which comes from the rectum and they ascend from the urethra into the urinary bladder. So uh, usually uh, it's recommended to avoid this contamination from the rectum. Uh, always tell the patient to clean uh, from uh, forward to backward instead of swiping or using the towel from back to forward. That's one method by in which you can uh, prevent some of the contamination caused by the rectum. Then cystitis, this is the uh, diagram showing the cells or uh, here. The microscopic examination revealed plenty of pulse cells and red blood cells. And this, uh, usually the culture is, uh, diagno culture will detect the organism usually within 24 to 48 hours and usually the bacteria are more than 105 ml per ml of the urine. Symptoms of cystitis is uh, dysuria, again, difficulty in urination, frequency, urgency, and there is pain, and also uh, painful micture. Pain is usually at the end of the micturation or passing urine. And there is also suprapubic tenderness. Suprapubic tenderness is the lower abdominal area. So as uh, you see, symptoms is all the symptoms are common, whether it's urethritis, cystitis, uh, usually there is uh, urgency, frequency of micturition, there is pain in the lower abdomen, there is tenderness on palpation. So symptoms are common in urethritis and cystitis. Then also there is constitutional upset means there is a general well-being of the patient is disturbed. They feel tired, they feel dizzy, they have some uh, uh, nervous weaknesses also. So all these are present in the cystitis. Then sterile pyuria. Pi is word used for the pus, pus in the urine. 
and uh, pus in, sterile pyuria is usually the negative culture in the presence of plenty of pus cells. If pus cells are present and there is no culture, no bacteria found in the on the culture of the urine, it is labeled as sterile pyuria. Pus with negative culture and this is also known as tuberculosis of the urinary tract. Cause is usually a recently treated urinary tract infection. UTI usually which is caused by organisms like Neisseria gonorrhoeae and also there is a, if there is renal tract tuberculosis and if there is uh, chlamydia urethritis. Then also uh, there might be false negative culture due to contamination with antiseptic or if the patient is treated with uh, antiseptics or antibiotics usually it can give false negative result. Then also, if there is contamination of the uh, specimen or sample with vaginal leukocytes, like leukocytes are white blood cells. Or if there is also uh, neoplasm, urinary tract, including renal uh, cancer and bladder cancer. So these are all the causes of sterile Pyuria. Sterile pyuria is a condition in which culture is uh, negative uh, in presence of plenty of the pus cells and it's also known as the tuberculosis of the urinary tract. Next is pyelitis. Pyelitis is inflammation of the renal pelvis or pelvis. And usually the symptoms of the patient is itching, a very aching pain over the loins. These are the areas where usually the pain is present. And now you can see once the infection reached the kidney, patient had fever with the chills and shakiness. Fever with chills and rigors. Rigors is there is shivering. And there is frequency of micturation and also difficulty in urination. And also there is nausea and vomiting. So these are some symptoms which we didn't notice or they were not present in patient with urethritis and cystitis, which is nausea, vomiting, anorexia, loss of appetite, and then patients usually present with fever, with chills, and shivering. So these are usually associated with pyelitis or pyelonephritis. So that was all about the section 2 of urinary tract infection. Thank you for watching scardia.com.